Now, without doubt, this was the most challenging photo shoot I have had to date. But the success of the final image was down to one slider in Photoshop. Now, I don't know why this is, but when taking portraits over the years, I've found that some people look great looking at the camera, but some people look great looking past the camera. It kind of gives them a bit more of a presence. Now, this picture of Molly, the surfer, I didn't want her to be looking at the camera, but the way everything worked out, the challenges of this photo shoot meant that it didn't kind of turn out the way I wanted it to. The lighting, yes but Molly's pose, no. Now I'm gonna show you how we can change that pose, so, well, with the eyes anyway, but before I show you the how, let me just explain the why. It's important to know why something was done. Now this photo shoot was done on a very bright, sunny and busy day on Saunton Sands Beach in North Devon, a stunning location that is a bit of a surfer's paradise. Before we went into the sea, we rehearsed our positions on the beach, so I knew where I was going to be, I knew where the light needed to be, and also Molly knew the kind of position that we wanted her to be in as well. Now this did mean that when we went into the sea, we had to go quite a way out to go beyond the breakers to the flatter water, and that actually meant being chest high in the sea, and I didn't have my camera in a waterproof case. What? Now the current was pushing us around all over the place and it was really difficult to maintain our formation. But in that small window of time when we did manage to get it just right, my position, the light position and Molly's position, the board's direction, her body pose and head, head turning, when that was just right, the only thing that was off was her eye position. And when she was looking straight at the camera, ideally I wanted her to look past the camera. And the difference in that one little thing can make or break this picture. So let's now dive into the computer and I'll show you how so incredibly easy it is to just change that eye direction to make this picture, I believe, a winner. All right, so kicking off then in Lightroom, first of all, this is the uh, picture here of Molly where everything seemed to work just right with the lighting and her posing. The only thing is her eye direction, looking straight at the camera. That's what we'll quickly fix. But before we do that, let's just do a very quick edit on this image here, bringing a bit of life and color back into the sky and the sea. So we'll do that using the new selections and maskings uh, utility within Lightroom. So I'll come up to the right hand side of the screen. We'll click to add a mask here and we're gonna choose the sky first of all. So I'll click on select sky and very quickly Lightroom can tell me right there's the sky. But if we look at it, you can see that it's actually included Molly's face. So we need to take that off. So we'll click on the subtract and we'll choose select subject. So that will now take Molly out of the selection of the sky. And you can see now if I click on this little eye icon here and do before and after, before and after, you can see that it's actually taking it off her face. So we'll go to the temperature slider here and we'll just add a little bit of blue back in the sky, give it a little bit more of that day, the, the color that it was on the day that we were there. So that's looking good. And we need to just change the color of the, the actual sea as well, make it a little bit more uh, a little bit more appealing. So what I'll do is I'll click to add a new mask. And what I'll do is I'm gonna use this one here, the linear gradient. So I'll click on that, bring my cursor into the C area here. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, press down and drag upwards. And by holding down the shift key, that'll keep it in a perfectly straight gradient as I move the cursor upwards. Now it doesn't matter here if I go over that horizon line, in fact I'm going to go way over that horizon line just there, because what I can now do is very quickly tell Lightroom to not include the sky, so again I'll click on that subtract and we'll choose select sky, and look when I do that it takes it off the horizon line, so we'll click on select sky, that goes just there, and it is actually on the subject, it's on Molly here, so we'll do another subtract and we'll choose subject, take it off Molly, It'll do that very quickly there. You can see it's taken off our hands, but the only thing that's left now, we can see some of that red overlay. If I do that off and on, you can see that red overlay is actually covering on her board. I don't want that to be affected. So the way I can actually get it off the board there is again, go back to that subtract. And this time from the menu here, we'll choose color range. Now I'll just take the tick out of that just there and I'm gonna click on the uh, yellow of the board just there. And let's just see now how's that going. I can come over now to this little refine slider here and move that across to say take it off the board. And you can see as I do that left and right, you'll see that it either takes it off or adds it to it. So I'll take it all the way across 
to 100. I think there's a little bit more left on there, so I can bring the uh, little sample here over onto the board just a little bit more, press down, and then that's it, perfect. That's taken it right off, there we go, excellent. So now that's done, we'll come back to that temperature slider, drag that over just to add a little bit of color back into the sea as well. So that's that just there, and if we turn these masks off, let's have a quick look here if we turn the masks, turn them all off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. Right, now that's done, let's now work on the eyes. So we'll go to the photo menu, edit in, and I'll just send it straight over into Photoshop here rather than using a smart object. Let's just click on the top one here, edit in Adobe Photoshop 2022. Click on that, it'll then send the image over into Photoshop where we can now carry on working on the eyes. Okay, so now that we've got the image open in Photoshop, what we'll then do is go to the filter menu and we'll dive in to neural filters. So when we click on that, it then opens up all these neural filters here, some that are actually fully featured, some of them that are in beta. So what we'll do is I'm gonna click on one down here called Smart Portrait. I'm gonna click this little icon to turn it all on. And then when we do that, over on the right hand side now, we've got this little slide here, we can see all these different options we've got of things that we can do to the face. Now the only one we want to use is this eye direction. So I'm going to put a little tick in the checkbox there and I can drag the slider to the left or to the right depending on which direction I want the eyes to be going. Now I want Molly to be looking past the camera, looking kind of camera left. So I'm going to get the little slider and I'll just drag it over to maybe around about minus 20. Now when we do that, you'll see in the bottom here it says processing in the cloud. It's now going up to the cloud looking for similar face structure, similar eyes which have got that change in the direction for it then to put into the picture, to blend them all in naturally. It doesn't take too long and straight away, look, there we go. We can now see that Molly's eyes are now starting to face a slightly different direction. I want it just a little bit more, so we'll take that slider. Let's take it down to around about minus 30, something like, yeah, minus 30 will do something like that. When we do that, again, we get the process in and job done. That's it. Molly's eyes are now changed in the direction. We can then choose the output here where we want it to stay. Just do it straight onto that layer, add a new layer, have a mask as a smart filter so that we can dive in and change it. In fact, that's what we're going to do. We'll choose smart filter and then we click OK. That then sends it back over into the main Photoshop workspace where we can see here. This is where we've got our neural filters that we've worked on. We can see now that we've got Molly's eyes have changed direction. If we turn that off and on, off and on, and if we wanted to change it, all we need to do now is just double click where it says neural filters. It'll reopen the neural filters properties where we've got that slider that we can start to play around with again. So a very simple and effective way and realistic way of changing the eye direction, which can make a massive difference to your picture. Now, I don't know about you, but there have been so many times in the past when I've taken quick pictures of friends or family, and then you look at the picture and go, ah, oh, you weren't looking at the camera. To be able to change it now so that they are looking at the camera, change that eye direction makes a massive difference, as it did for me with this picture of Molly here, because without it, with her looking at the camera rather than looking past the camera, it just didn't, it just didn't work for me. But just being able to change that one thing, when everything else was perfect, the lighting, her posing, her head position, everything else was perfect apart from the eyes. So just being able to turn those away just slightly, for me, makes the picture a winner. So just think about all those pictures that you maybe have got where just that small thing that you can change could make a massive, massive difference. So I really hope you found this useful. Um, if you have and you like the video, give us a thumbs up. That always helps. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, just click on that subscribe button. It's a free way that you can just support this channel. And it's a really nice thing to do anyway. But listen, I'm going to be putting out videos every single week. So for now, that's me. I'm, I'm all done. I'll see you next week. Yeah.